It's getting warmer. We're getting into the hot months of the year and I'm super excited about sapphic summer. Hi, hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Alex and today we're talking all about sapphic books for the summer. So a couple of years ago um, I participated um, in sapphic summer. Uh, I think it was on TikTok probably where you read sapphic books over the summer. They don't necessarily have to be like beach reads. You know, it could be whatever you want, honestly. Um, but it was like a really fun way for me to get into more sapphic type books. So I decided to do a little episode, a little video, whatever, about sapphic books that I would recommend. So I, I obviously, <laughs> this happens every time, um, I started making the list and the list got really long. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to break it down so I'm not just blabbing your ear off. And so the way that I've set it up today is going to be like a little bit different than what I normally do, but I won't ruin the surprise. We'll just get into it in a minute. But I'm going to do some book recommendations for some sapphic reads that you might want to add to your summer TBR for sapphic summer. And then I'm going to tell you um, about some books that I'm adding to my sapphic summer TBR. Um, so yeah, it's going to be like a lot today. I don't know, maybe it'll be fun. Before we get into it, make sure you hit all the buttons down below so you know what I'm posting. I post every week and all we do on this channel is talk about books. So if you like listening to people talk about books, here I am every week doing just that for you. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so I said this was going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. So yeah, it's going to be a little bit different. Instead of just like giving you guys like a list of books and talking about them, which is like always what I do. Um, I broke this down to like subgenre, I guess you would say, or just genre in general, so that I could just give you one title. It's kind of range a little bit in intensity. So it's like some of these books, like it just has some representation in there. Maybe you're new to the genre. Maybe you're just dipping your toe in. You don't want anything that's like uh, too heavy. Maybe you don't want anything that has any sex in it. You know, maybe you don't want the whole plot of the book to be about relationship like you don't want it to be like a romance type book so yeah I got you I got lots of recommendations today so let's start all right if you're looking for a period piece that has sapphic representation this is it Wild and Wicked Things by Francesca May y'all I just read this book so you can hear all about it in my wrap-up that I did um it's set in the 20s post-world war one magical realism it has just got the best vibes. Now we read this for my book club and when we started digging into it there were like plot holes and stuff in there and generally there were some issues. When I first finished reading this book I absolutely loved it just because the vibe of it was immaculate for me. I think if you don't dig too much into it, if you just take it at surface value it's actually really great. I think that if you start digging into it, eh, you're probably going to come up with some issues. This is a very like witchy, feminist, dark energy, dark magic, divine feminine power type of book. Does this have good sapphic representation? Yes, I think it does have a good representation. And since it's set in the 20s, we're kind of dealing with um, a different vibe there. I don't really read period pieces that much. This felt a lot like a prohibition, but with magic. It just had a really cool edge to it. Um, the sapphic representation really worked for me. It wasn't too heavy, wasn't too um, intimate. Like, um, I wouldn't really categorize this as uh, a romance, but it definitely had romantic themes to it. Um, if you like practical magic, if you like, um, I also said in my last post, if you like Sawkill Girls, like, but a grown-up version of that, I think you would really like this. So yeah, check this one out if you would like a period piece with some sapphic representation. How about Greek mythology, right? Um, I think there's a lot of books that have a lot of great representation in it, but I'm going to fangirl my girl Hannah Lynn and talk about this book. The Queens of the Mascara. It is about the rise and the fall of the Amazon warrior women and I think she just does an amazing job in general of writing mythology. 
I absolutely love her writing style. I love how much research she does. I love how real this feels. I don't even like Greek mythology that much, okay? And I loved this book. How is the sapphic representation? It's not off the charts. We don't get into, like, a huge amount of it. Um, the main character that we're looking at throughout the novel is not gay or anything. Uh, she's not a lesbian. She's not attracted to women. But there is a lot of women supporting women themes in this book, and one of the uh, more prominent side characters uh, is gay. So I think this has gentle representation, and it has a really great storyline. And there's also just this, like, um, woman-led community vibe to it, because this, uh, this is the Amazon Warrior Women. So yeah, it just has a lot of really great themes and I absolutely loved it and the ending broke my heart. I would say this has gentle representation um, that could be enjoyed by pretty much everybody. If you're looking for a young adult book, I have to suggest Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. I have talked endlessly about this book and let me tell you, the YA category for me was so difficult. I had a lot of YA sapphic books to put on here. And um, I really had to whittle it down to this because I think this does such a great job of highlighting so many other things at the same time. We have really great mental health representation in this book. We have amazing BIPOC POC representation. We also get a um, arrangement of LGBTQ uh, plus representation in the book. So it's not just sapphic. Um, is it a romance? Mm, I don't really know. I mean, I feel like YA kind of dances this line of blending lots of subgenres together, and I think that's uh, what this book does very beautifully. It touches on a lot of really great issues, and it's just an amazing read. I'm going to give you just like a little preface of it since I just sort of said it was just great. <laughs> Our main character has been away at like a private school out of state because her brother, or I guess it's like a stepbrother, was diagnosed with bipolar. Their parents have been struggling with her brother Lionel's diagnosis with bipolar and suggested that she get moved to a private school somewhere else so that they can help him get balanced and she can still live like a fairly normal life while they figure all that out. Um, Things go wrong at boarding school, she comes home for summer break, and she's just trying to like piece everything back together and also convince her parents to not send her back to private school. Pretty much as soon as she comes home from summer break, she realizes that Lionel has gone off of his medications and that he's asked her to like keep it a secret and not tell anybody. And so she's going through the summer keeping Lionel's secret and also trying to make sure that he doesn't go off the deep end. In the meantime, she gets a job, she gets a summer crush, just like all the normal teen things that happen to you. And yeah, this is just like a snippet of her life, her and Lionel together trying to get through the summer with everything that's happening. It's just so well done. It really is. Like, the representation here on all the fronts was really great. We also get into a lot of family themes that are really well done. This book just, it hits so many high notes for me. I absolutely love it and I'll never stop recommending it. Are you looking for an adult contemporary piece? Sky Falling by Mia McKenzie. Talked about this book before. This book was so good to me. It also has just tons of great representation. And um, yeah, and it's, a, it's an adult book. I feel like um, a lot of LGBTQ or rainbow books kind of like tend to gravitate more towards YA or coming of age, um, which is great because I think that our young people really do need books like this so that they feel represented and they can, you know, identify with the characters and things like that. But some of us want adult books because we're not YA anymore. <laughs> I have not been a young adult for a hot minute and I really enjoy reading um, books where the characters are more my age. So Sky Falling definitely falls into this category. Our main character, Sky, has had kind of a nomadic life. She has this business that allows her to travel around the world. Well, she comes home for the summer, and while she's home for the summer, she finds out that she has a child. Um, she ended up donating one, uh, some of her eggs 
to a friend that could not have children and then they lost touch. She comes home and she realizes that this friend has passed away and now the child that was her donated egg has sought her out to try and piece her life together on the other end of it. So there's lots of really interesting family themes happening here. We've got a lot of found family and rainbow representation in this book was just stellar. We're also getting tons of BIPOC POC issues and representation, gentrification. Like this book also hits so many high notes for me. Would I consider it a sapphic romance? Mm, I would. I would. Um, would I say it's um, like graphic or erotic? I think there are a few detailed scenes. There's definitely one in the beginning. So yeah, I would really only recommend this if you're wanting something that's a little bit more detailed. I remember reading this and just falling in love with it. Like, so many great things happening in this book. So much great representation. There's also a lot of really good mental health representation here. I, it's just amazing. I'll never stop recommending this book. I've talked about this book so many times on my channel, but it's honestly one of my favorites and I feel like this is perfect for Sapphic Summer. Okay, so this next one is for all my people that are just wanting to dip their toe in Sapphic representation. Maybe you don't want the entire book to be about someone's love life or about their experiences being gay or anything like that. Maybe you want it to just be gentle representation. One of Us is Lying by Geneva Rose. Okay, Geneva Rose is amazing. I follow her on TikTok and I absolutely love her and her channel and her books are just really amazing. <laughs> this one is like a thriller. So we have our main character that owns a very prestigious salon in a very rich um, area. It's a very specific set of clients that come in here, like, and it's only this set of clients that are allowed in this salon. Like, it's very exclusive. And they're all very tight-knit, and they're all very petty and gossipy. One member of the group ends up dead. And the whole book, we're getting kind of like the before, where we're learning about all the characters and how much they all hate each other. And the after and we're kind of going back and forth as they're trying to piece together the crime that happened and who um, murdered this woman it's wild it's a wild ride from start to finish like I could not put it down I was so invested if you like um, those housewife shows you know like the real housewives of whatever I think you would really like this book it has a lot of those same vibes and yeah, it's just wild. It's crazy and it's so much fun. I could never have guessed the ending. Like, Janeiro Rose totally turned it on its ear at the end and surprised me. There is a little bit of sapphic representation in this book. And when I say a little bit, it is only a little bit. It's not very heavy and it's not the main focus of the book. So, if you're wanting to just, you know, get like a light sprinkle of sapphic representation in your reading, I think this is a really good book to go with. Plus it's super fun. What about horror? Do you want a horror book that has sapphic representation? The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gould. This was another one of those books that was just wild. Okay, um, I would also categorize this as a YA book because um, all of the main characters are young adults or like, I don't know, probably between 17 and 19. But yeah, YA. We're following our main character and her two dads run a paranormal TV show. So like ghost hunters basically. And they tour around the country and see all these haunted places and film for their show. She's really tired of having a nomadic life. And she can't wait to kind of like get her independence and move away and move on. Especially since the relationship with one of her fathers is extremely strained. Well, right as she's about to approach her 18th birthday where she can be free and move on, her one father comes to her and says, we're going to this little tiny town in the middle of nowhere to film for the show. And you have to come with us. It's not negotiable. So they go, and this town is just like podunk as anything. <laughs> when I first talked about this book... I'll put the link up there or whatever. 
Um, I said this town that they went to reminded me of my hometown in every worst way imaginable, and I still stand by that. Came from a very small, predominantly uh, white town, extremely classist, extremely uh, racist. It's a lot. <laughs> if you grew up in a town like that, you would probably identify with this book quite a bit. There's a lot of really cool themes happening in this book. We do have a lot of great rainbow representation here. Our main character is lesbian, which is difficult in this town that they're visiting. There's also lots of BIPOC POC representation here. Did any kind of negative theme that you could tie into those two things happen in this book? I think if you're sensitive to racism, homophobia, slurs, things like that, I, you probably should not read this book. It is pretty heavy on all of those things, but if you want a really creepy, weird read with some really, um, I think, well thought out representation, like it just felt so real to me. Like, because this reminded me so much of my town that I grew up in, it felt very real to me and very accurate, which means that it was very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> if you like books like that, I would definitely give this a read. It is horror and it's paranormal horror. Like, the dads are not just like doing a gimmick or whatever. There is actually a paranormal horror story here underneath it all. And it's so much darker than I was expecting. So, this one hits a lot of high notes for me. It's definitely one of those books I'll never forget. And it's not super heavy on sapphic representation, but it is in there. So I think also if you're looking for something where the rainbow representation is not like the focus of the story, this is a good one. Okay, so that's all my recommendations for Sapphic Summer. So now let's get into what I'm adding to my Sapphic Summer reading list. And I'm super excited. I contacted a friend of mine. Um, that reads a ton of rainbow books. Like, I feel like that's all that she reads. She reads a lot, like way more than what I read. And I really value her opinion. Like she's never steered me wrong. So yeah, uh, if she recommended these books to me, I know they're going to be good. The first book I'm adding to my Sapphic Summer TBR is Mistakes Were Made by Meryl Wilsner. So when I asked for recommendations from my friend, I made sure to tell her that I wanted adult um, rainbow books because, like I said, I have not been young adult in a minute, and I really would like more grown-up representation. So this is about a college girl that goes on a one-night stand with a woman in a bar, and then in the morning, her best friend's like, come on, I want you to meet my mom. So she takes her over to the house to have like brunch or whatever. And the mom is the one that she ended up hooking up with the night before. I mean, come on, that sounds great. Like this sounds perfect for Sapphic Summer, like little rom-com, whatever. So yeah, it's on the list. Okay, the next book is Into the Drowning Deep by Mira Grant. This cover okay i saw this cover and i was like yes i don't even need to know what it's about and then i read the description <sighs> okay so it does get a little bit of a knock because it's very thick and um it's part of a series oh my gosh y'all know how much i struggle how much i struggle with series okay but the description First of all, like the first line of the description is um, they're going into the Mariana Trench. Okay, the last time I was in the Mariana Trench was with Nick Cutter, okay, and I had a very traumatizing time. Um, I don't know, you guys, if you haven't been here a minute, I am like terrified of the deep, deep ocean. Okay, the Mariana Trench is the deepest part of the ocean. So, I don't know why anybody needs to be going down there. Yeah, anything that's set in deep water is terrifying to me. So already I'm like, ah, oh, this is going to have like a really cool, like dark edge to it, right? I kind of read a little bit more. Basically, uh, she, they're looking for something, obviously, and then they find something that they're not supposed to find, obviously. Um, the description didn't give me a ton. What gave me a ton 
were the reviews. And the reviews were saying sapphic mermaids, demon mermaids, count me in, okay? Count me in. I'm really interested in reading this book. Okay, the next book I'm going to talk about is Fina by Nino Cipri. Okay, this one's like extremely short and it sounded kind of like funny a little bit. So um, there's lots of high notes in the description that caught my eye. So one of them was the multiverse. Yes. Um, enemies to lovers, not enemies to lovers. Maybe it's a uh, ex lovers. Um, it does have sapphic representation and it's about like being trapped in like an Ikea where the furniture comes to life, but it's like evil. I mean, that sounds wild. And it's super short, so that gives it like tons of bonus points. Like I might be able to sit down and read it in one sitting. So yeah, this one on. The last one I'm going to talk to you about today is Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Y'all know how I feel about Sarah Gailey. I absolutely love Sarah Gailey and their writing. So in the two books um, that I've read by Sarah Gailey, Sarah Gailey is non-binary, but in the books that I have read by them, the main characters have not been anywhere on the rainbow spectrum. If you also don't know, Sarah Gailey has written a ton of books. And so, I just don't even know if I'm going to be able to read all of their books in my lifetime. Anyway, my friend recommended this book to me and said that the representation was really good. It's kind of a western, um, but also sci-fi. That sounds kind of interesting. Now for the life of me, I can't remember what the description was, but I remember reading the description and thinking, yeah, that sounds awesome. <laughs> Sorry, that's not super helpful, but um, sometimes you just get to the point where you really like an author, and so it doesn't really matter what the description says. Um, and that's kind of where I am with Sarah Gailey. Like, they haven't let me down yet. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Hopefully this gave you like a lot of ammunition for a sapphic summer. Um, like I said, it was like a little different than what I normally do, but I had a lot of fun and I talked for a really long time. This video is a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I also wanted to get this video out to you guys because June is Pride Month here in the U.S. And so this is a really great like preemptive list to add to pride books. Remember, you can like diversify your bookshelf all year, but definitely take time during pride month to maybe read something that you haven't read before with representation you haven't read or seen or whatever. It's good to shake up your bookshelf, you know? So make sure you hit all the buttons down below so you know what I'm posting. I post every week and I'm really excited about what's coming up the next couple weeks, the next couple months. And I hope you guys will stick around and I hope that you found something amazing to read for Sapphic Summer. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!